Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that we have to love our parents, we have to respect our parents, we have to be kind to our parents. Respect to the glorious Quran, Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 23 and 24. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُ إِلَّا إِيَّهِ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْ دِحْسَانًا إِمَّا يَبْلُغَنَّا إِنَّكَ الْكِبَرَ أَحَدُوهُمَا أَوْ كِلَاهُمَا فَلَا تَقُلْ لَهُمَا أُفْ وَلَا تَنْحَرْهُمَا وَقُلْ لَهُمَا قَوْلًا كَرِيمًا وَاحْفِظْ لَهُمَا جَنَاحَ الدُّلِّ مِنَ الرَّحْمَةِ وَقُلْ رَبِّ ارْحَمْهُمَا كَمَا رَبَّ يَعْنِي صَغِيرًا The Lord has decreed that you worship none but him and to be kind to your parents whether one or both of them attain old age. Say not a word of contempt nor repel them but address them in terms of humility and say, my Lord, have mercy on them, even as they cherished me in my childhood. We have to lower our wings of humility to our parents. And if we obey our parents, we are submitting our will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. If we love our parents, if we respect our parents, if we are kind to our parents, we are submitting our will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Monasticism is prohibited in Islam. It is mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, volume 7, book of Nikah, chapter number 3, hadith number 5066. That, Ya Ma'ashar al-Shabaab, Man istata'a minkum al-ba'ata fa yatazawwaj. O young people, whosoever is able to marry, should marry. And our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, it is mentioned in Sahih Bukhari, that, Atazawwaj al-Nisa, fa man raghaba al sunnati fa laysa binni. Whosoever does not marry, is not of me. So if you marry, you are submitting your will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the glorious Quran, in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 19, وَآشِرُهُنَّ بِالْبَعْرُوفِ فَالْكَرِهْتُبُهُنَّ فَعَسَى وَيَجْعَلَ اللَّهُ فِي قَيْرًا كَسِيرًا And treat your wife with kindness and equity, even if you dislike her. So if you treat your wife kindly, you are submitting your will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And it is mentioned in the glorious Quran, in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 32, that, وَلَا تَنْكُرَبُ الزِّلَى إِنَّهُ كَالَ فَاحِشَتَوْ وَسَعَ سَبِيلًا And do not come close to adultery, for it is a clear opening to evil. So if you are abstained from adultery, you are submitting your will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is a system of modesty that is mentioned in the Quran as well as in the Bible. It is mentioned in the glorious Quran, in Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 30. كل المؤمنين يغضب أبصارهم ويحفظوا فروجهم. Say to the believing man that he should lower his gaze and guard his modesty. Whenever any man looks at any woman, if any thought, if any other shape thought comes to his mind, he should lower his gaze and guard his modesty. And the same message is mentioned in the Bible. It is mentioned in the Gospel of Matthew, chapter number five, verse number twenty-seven and twenty-eight, that it was said by the people of old times, "Thou shalt not commit adultery." For if any man Look at that any woman in order to lust on her beauty, he has committed adultery in his heart. Same as the Quran, but as the Quran says, you have to lower your gaze. And Jesus Christ speaks up on him says, For if any man look at that any woman in order to lust on her beauty, he has committed adultery in his heart. And it's for the best of the glorious Quran, it's Surah Nur, chapter number 24, verse number 31. That كل المؤمنات يغضون من أبصارهن ويحفظن فروجهن ولا يبدين زينتهن إلا ما ظهر منها. Say to the believing woman that she should lower her gaze and guard her modesty and display not her beauty, accept what is ordinary of. And tell her to draw her veil over her bosoms and display not her beauty, except in front of their fathers, their husbands, their sons. And there's a big list of mehram, of close relatives who she cannot marry, is given. There are basically six criteria for hijab that are mentioned in the glorious Quran. And in the hadith of our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the first is the extent for the man and the woman. For the man, it is from the navel to the knee. And for the woman, complete body should be covered. The only part that can be seen is the face and the hands up to the wrist. The remaining five criteria are the same for the man as well as the woman. The second is that the clothes they wear, they should be tight fitting. They shouldn't reveal the figure. The third is that the clothes they wear, they shouldn't be transparent or translucent. The fourth is that they should not be so glamorous that they attract the opposite sex. The fifth is that they should not be that of the opposite sex. And the sixth is that they should not be that of the unbeliever. These are basically six criteria that are mentioned in the Quran as well in the Sahih Hadith regarding hijab. And the same message is mentioned in the Bible. If you read the Bible, it is mentioned in the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 22, verse number 5. That a woman shall not wear that which pertains to the man, nor shall a man wear a woman's garment. For whosoever 
does. So is an abomination unto the Lord thy God. So it is prohibited in the Bible wearing the clothes of the opposite sex. And it's further mentioned in the first Timothy, chapter number two, verse number nine, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with bright red hair or gold or pearls or costly array. It is mentioned in the first Corinthians, chapter number 11, verse number five to six, that if any woman prays with her head uncovered, her head should be shaved off. Imagine the Quran is not as strict as the Bible, whereas the Bible says that the head should be shaved off. If Christian means a person who follows the teaching of Jesus Christ, peace upon I would like to say that we Muslims are more Christian than the Christian themselves. It is a sunnah in Islam that we are circumcised. And the same message is mentioned in the Bible. If you read the Bible, it is mentioned in the book of Acts, chapter number 7, verse number 8, that we have to be circumcised. It is mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 7, verse number 22, that you have been given a covenant of circumcision. It is mentioned in the Gospel of Luke, chapter number 2, verse number 21, that Jesus Christ, peace upon him, he was circumcised on the eighth day. So if Christian means a person who follows the teaching of Jesus Christ, peace upon him, I would like to say that we Muslims are more Christian than the Christian themselves. A person who submits his will to Almighty God, he's called as a Muslim. Muslim means submitting our will to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As I said earlier, it is mentioned in the Gospel of John, chapter number 5, verse number 30, not my own will, but the will of my Father. And anyone who says, I seek not my will, but the will of my father. He's a Muslim. Jesus Christ, peace upon him, verily, he was a very good practicing Muslim. I would like to end my talk with a quotation from the glorious Quran, from Surah Maida, chapter number 5, verse number 82. La tajidanna aqrabahum mawaddatan lillazina amanu lillazina qalu inna nasara. Nearest among them in love to the believers will thou find, who say, we are Christians. Wa akhru da'wan alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. <laughs>